time to open our service with prayer this evening and get Brother Eddie to come on up and lead us. Uh, while he's coming, it's good to have Sister Strickland, Brother Easter here with us this evening. It's good to have Brian with us. That's Jay's day. Uh, y'all just take your liberty in the Lord. It's good to be in God's house tonight. Yes. Hope everybody's feeling well. Um, if not, the Lord can heal you. Um, let's uh, continue to pray for Brother and Sister Ball and their families, and Brother James, Brother Dean, uh, Sister Chastity, Sister Sandra, Sister Sarah and her family, uh, Sister Angela, uh, Sister Betty, Brother Benny, uh, Sister Blanche's sister Peggy Fogelman, Joanne Sanders, Charles Chisholm, Peggy Massey, um, Sister Sheila's mother, uh, Brother Dylan, um, Brother Josiah, Sister Audrey, Sister Valerie, and uh, Brother and Sister Baker. Um, they all need healing in their body. Yes. And uh, let's also remember um, Sam Lamb, uh, Sister Audrey's friend David, uh, Lawson Ferguson, and Brother Dean's co-worker Mike. They all need healing and salvation. Uh, let's continue to pray for Nathan and Brianna, and uh, pray for God to move in, in Aaron's situation. And uh, let's remember the youth from our church, Haley Harper, Aaron, uh, Jalen, Selena, and Tierney. Uh, does anybody else have a, a prayer request? Everybody's doing good. Keep praying, huh? for, keep praying for Audrey and Josiah. Right. And uh, as you named off, they got several sick here at the church. Yeah. Keep praying for all those sick right now. Mm -hmm. Just other places. They got pastor friends who've got people in their church that are sick. So right. pray for them. God will help them and heal them. Amen. All remember, the sick ones. Remember me, pray for me. Okay, remember Brother Scott that the Lord will anoint him for Wednesday night. Anybody else? If not, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. <coughs> Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, let us love you tonight, God, and thank you, Lord, for everything you do, God. God, we just ask the Lord to send your healing power down, God, just save and sanctify and fill with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Save the lost, God. Lord, we just ask the Lord to touch Brother Sister Ball tonight, Lord. Heal their bodies tonight, God, so they can get back in church, Lord. I know they would love to be here, Lord, but your touch, Lord, they can do it, God. Just heal them tonight, Lord, touch them, God. Lord, as you touch us, this is Jesus mother, Lord, and heal her tonight, God. Tonight. Lord, touch Kim Dawson, God, and heal her body tonight, Lord. God, let just touch, let's touch Brother Dylan tonight, Lord. Heal his body, God. Touch Sister Valerie tonight, Lord, heal her body, God. Uh, Lord, we just have so many sick, God. We just ask the Lord to just touch them all, Lord. Just heal them, God. Just, uh, touch Brother and Sister Baker tonight, Lord. Heal her body tonight, God. Uh, Lord, we just ask the Lord to have your way in this service, Lord. Uh, let the Holy Ghost have his way tonight, God. Lord, we just ask you to anoint this service, to anoint our preaching tonight, Lord, and the singers and the musicians tonight, God, for your glory. Heal her, give her a complete healing of her body, Lord. Oh, we love you and praise you and thank you for everything you do, God. Oh, we have to touch Sister Black and Sister uh, Peggy, Lord, and, uh, and uh, her uh, friend Peggy Massey and, and uh, uh, Charles Chisholm, God, if you just heal their bodies tonight, Lord. And, uh, Lord, I'm a lost, God, just save a lost, save my lost loved ones, God, save my daughter and my son, God, his wife, Lord. Lord, just touch her tonight, God, just strong as a victor horse, God.
It's going to be back in God's house again this evening, and it's God that keeps us. Amen. Psalm 4 and 3 says, But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Uh, there's people that belong to this world and to the devil, and they'll be destroyed one day if they don't repent. But there's people that belong to God, and that's us here tonight. So let's worship and give praise to his name. Let's worship in spirit and truth as uh, Sister Shelton comes and leads us to the congregational. Amen. Want to have church here tonight, don't you? Feel the spirit of God here. Let's let go. Let's let him have his way tonight. Hallelujah. Feel good in my soul. Praise yes. God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Get you to stand with us. We sing this song in the choir, and there's always a stipulation that you smile a little bit when you sing it. Everybody will be happy over there. Please, please smile at me when you sing. Praise the Lord. I'll smile at you too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond, where the saved of earth shall soon the glory share. Souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing his praises. Everybody will be happy over there. Mothers, fathers, Sisters, brothers will be singing round the throne in that land where no one ever knows a care. And the Christians of all ages will join in the triumph song. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there.
thinking about going to that place where everybody's going to be happy and make you happy here. So you might as well just get used to it. Just be happy here while you're on your way there. And at this time, we're going to see if I offer for ushers to come. Brother Zach, yes, Lord, bless the time of giving. And given this time away, Sister Shelton, Sister Tina, Sister Sharon, come in, sir, and song. No happiness was found within. I never knew the meaning of joy down in my soul. When at last I finally knelt, contentment filled my soul like I never felt. Heaven came down, there was glory all around when he saved my soul. Sages while they ever roll, praising his name for the glorious day that he saved my soul. I remember the day, I remember the day when the Lord saved me. When the Lord saved me, all of heaven came down. All of heaven came down. I was happy and free. So happy and free. Glory filled my soul. Glory filled my soul, for I knew the Lord had made me whole. I shall never forget that glorious day. 
Sages while they ever roll, praising his name for the glorious day that he saved my soul. I remember the day, I remember the day when the Lord saved me. When the Lord saved me, all of heaven came down. All of heaven came down. I was happy and free. So happy and free. Glory filled. saved you the Lord. it's good sometimes to think back of the mess he got you out of uh, uh, don't look back wishing you could go back but look back remembering that mess uh, the harder you dig the deeper that hole got but then somebody come through whose arm wasn't too short to reach down there and save you at this time I'm going to have Sir Sir Pastor Brother Shelton Thank you, brother. man give him a praise tonight bless his name tonight you remember the day the Lord saved you Amen, I've told you there's a lot of things I can't remember, some things I don't care to remember, but I'll never forget the day Jesus saved my soul. I told you I have the piece of carpet back there in my office from that old building, the old sanctuary over there where I got saved at. On a Sunday night, my grandpa preaching the gospel, went down that altar, I gave my life to the Lord, and I told the Lord, if you'll save somebody like me, I'll serve you the rest of my life, commit my life to you, and you saved me that night. And, I, you know, I've seen people who, you know, said they got saved, and you see them for a little while, then they're gone. I've seen people who say they got saved, you never see a change in them. Now, I don't know about other people's experiences, what they experienced, but I know what I experienced. When the Lord saved me, he changed my life completely. He literally made a new creature out of me, a new creation out of me. It didn't take him five years to get me saved. He changed me instantly. What I desired when I went to that church those things of that world I didn't desire anymore. I didn't care about those things any longer. I had met him, and I knew that I had him in my heart now. And I just wanted to serve him and live for him because of what he brought me out of, what he saved me from. Whom's forgiven much, they love much. I was forgiven of a whole lot. How about you? I love him a whole lot. Amen. It's a joy to be back in God's house on this Sunday night. Appreciate you being with us this evening. We love all of you. We do have several that are still dealing with sickness right now. We've got several out tonight. 
Uh, you keep praying for them. Everybody's getting better. It's just a little process here. And good to see Dylan back tonight. Glad he's, he's starting to feel better and God's helping him. And you keep praying for all these others that are out. We miss them. When you're not here, you're missed. Is that right? And uh, so we want to lift each one up. I know that you've been praying, and let's just continue to do that. How many enjoyed the singing tonight? Amen. Amen. I don't care anything about rock and roll. I don't care anything about country. Well, that didn't get quite as many amens. I don't care anything about pop, rap, heavy metal, head banging. Lord knows. I used to listen to all that kind of stuff before I got saved. I mean, I just liked all, all kinds of music, all genres of music. But when I got saved, the only thing I want to listen to is gospel music. So I'll listen to gospel music. You say, well, Brother Shetton, that's pretty narrow. I'm just telling you, I just want to listen to what makes me think of him and where I'm going. Amen. Amen. Listen to country music. I want to go home, kick my dog, and throw my wife out of the house. <laughs> then leave the light on so she'll come back. That right? The rap music, I couldn't understand what they were saying. And certainly that head banging stuff. And I was never the kind going to wear my britches down below my waist. I was out, I was out Friday, I think it was, in town doing some stuff and uh, cold that day. And I put up there on 64, and there was a boy standing there. I don't know how old he, he He was old enough to know better. I do know that. Boy standing out there, had a, had a, sw a sweatshirt on and a pair of shorts on. And not only did he have a pair of shorts on, but he had them pulled down. And I, I'm not exaggerating. He had them pulled down to here, up under his backside. Underwear everywhere, hanging out everywhere. And I thought, that is the dumbest looking thing I have ever seen in my life. I mean, if you're so tired that you can't go ahead and pull them things all the way up, you need to stay home in the bed. It's like he got right there and he said, I can't go no further. And there's a hump back there, but you're going over that hump, and once you get there, they'll stay. I saw, boy, somebody's daddy needs to tell him how to put his pants on and put some pants on. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 2. Ain't you glad I'm quitting right there? Let's preach a little bit tonight. Second Timothy chapter 2. We do love you and appreciate you coming tonight. All of you. Enjoyed the good service this morning. Good, my, good to have my mother, my mother back with us tonight. God's helping her. She's been through an awful lot. God's helping her daily. Some of you are going through things right now that it's by His grace you got here tonight, but you're here. It wasn't been for his grace, you couldn't have been here tonight, but you're here by the grace of God. Amen. I told you this morning that to remember your blessings, remember how good God's been to you and how good God is to you every single day. And every day find, find time to thank him and praise him and love him and worship him. You can't never give him enough. We'll spend forever and eternity trying to praise him and it'll never be enough. Amen. For all that he's done for us as his children. 2 Timothy chapter 2. <clears throat> we will read verses 3 and 4 tonight. Say amen when you find it please. Amen. Preachers y'all see how I did that? Give them time to find it before you get going. These boys get up and they're, they're right out of the chute. They don't even give you time to find what they're going to read to you. They tell you the scripture and they start reading. Some of you still looking. <laughs> it's behind me though right? Amen. Give them time. Give them time. I'm picking on them. I love these boys. I love these preachers. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. The Apostle Paul, preaching and speaking here to the younger Timothy, his son in the faith, he said, Thou therefore endure hardness, hardships, difficulties. Go through things. You're going to go through things, but go through them. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Thou therefore endure hardness. Go through the trials. Go through the difficulties. Go through the hardships. Be determined. Christ set his face like a flint. that He's going to that cross. Be determined. 
endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him. That's our primary goal is to please him. If your life's not about pleasing him, then you're not living the right life for him. Our life, our purpose is to please God, to please the Lord. Somebody said, well, I don't know whether this is right or wrong. Does it please God? If it don't, then it's wrong. Leave it alone. Well, I'm a ta- Leave it alone. Please him that we may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Father, thank you tonight. Sister Amy, lay your hand on my mother right there, please. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the privilege to be in this house again tonight now, Lord. I'm grateful and I'm humbled and honored to stand behind this sacred desk. I don't ever take this lightly, God. I've prepared, I've prayed, I've fasted, I've studied, I've gotten along with you, Lord. I believe I've heard from you, God, and I believe you want to talk to us here tonight. And I pray for the next little while that you'd lay your hand upon this piece of clay. And Lord, that you'd touch every vessel under the sound of my voice tonight. I pray, God, that you would help us. Lord, that when we leave here, we'll be more like you, Jesus. We'll be closer to you. We'll be stronger in you. I pray for the sick. Let them leave healed tonight. Those that are hurting, God, pour in that balm, that oil tonight, Jesus. Those that are dealing with difficulties, God, give them what they need to go through those trials, to face those mountains, God, and to walk through those low valleys, Lord. Encourage tonight, God, and strengthen this body of Christ. I praise you and thank you again for letting us be here. Thank you for all the songs of worship, God, that have blessed our hearts, uh, caused our spirits to leap within us, Lord. And Father, I pray that we'll meet in these altars tonight, and when we arrive here, Lord, the fire will be burning around these altars. Uh, let that fire get in us, dear God. Uh, let that fire burn in us, Jesus. Uh, Lord, when we go out of this house tonight, if time stands, we'll be as a city set on a hillside that cannot be hid. Help us not to hide it under a bushel or under a bed, but let our light shine in the darkness of this world. Let people know that we have been with you, Lord. And we're grateful and we're thankful and we love you, God. We praise you for all that you are, all that you're doing. And we honor you for it all, above all, in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Will you give him one more hand of praise as you're seated tonight? Praise the Lord. As a young man, I, I remember uh, close to graduation, and you know, most, most young men, uh, when you're going to get out of school and you've got your life ahead of you, you don't always know what you're going to do. Matter of fact, most young men, they don't, they don't have an idea or a clue what they're, they're, they're planning to get involved in or get into and maybe make a career out of. And I knew early on as a young man, I wanted to get in the car business. My best friend, his dad owned a dealership, and that was my goal was to sell cars. And I knew, though, at the age of 18, upon graduation, nobody's going to hire an 18-year-old boy. Uh, matter of fact, I went and applied at one dealership, and the man told me, he said, well, you've got to have some experience. And I said, well, how can I have experience if nobody gives me a chance? Nevertheless, I knew at that age nobody was going to let me get started at 18 years of age. And I entertained the thought of going into the military. Uh, I remember distinctly thinking about that very seriously. I had some friends of mine that when they graduated, they went into the military, and, and some of them made careers out of that. And uh, my dad was in the military. My dad, when I was born, he was actually in Fort Polk, Louisiana. They're in basic training, if I remember correctly. And uh, he was in the military for seven years. And to this day, if you talk to him, if you mention military, I mean, he'll tell you how much he loved it. He loved being in that military. He enjoyed it. And so I entertained the thought of that. I thought, well, I could go in that and make a career out of that and, you know, do something as a soldier. Uh, I never did. I never joined the military. But I thought about as I was preparing this message, here I am. Uh, for the last nearly 27 years, I have been a soldier. 
not in the army here for our this country, not in the Air Force or the Navy or anything like that, but I have been a soldier in the army of the Lord for almost 27 years now. I've served the Lord, and I've been part of this, and he's been the captain uh, of this army that I'm in. If you're a child of God, if you're a Christian, uh, you're part of the army of the Lord as well. And my question tonight to you as the, as the army of the Lord, part of that army, a part of that bride of Christ, uh, is are you a good soldier? Are we good soldiers in the army of the Lord? I want to preach about that for a little while tonight. Are you a good soldier? There is a great need in this last hour for men and women of faith to arise. I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm sick to death of all the gimmicks of religion. I'm tired of going to other churches, and I'm not knocking on anybody else. I'm just telling you facts. I'm tired of going to revival services and leaving there being so disappointed. I'm tired of watching people who've held a standard for a long time leave that standard now. We need men and women of faith to rise up in this hour and that will be counted for the glory of God. There is no more time for compromising. There is no more time for half-hearted devotion. There is no more time for in and out and up and down and up and down and in and out. We've got more than enough of that in the church. I said we've got more than enough of that. But right here, right now, uh, there is a need like never before for real Holy Ghost-filled soldiers of the cross to step on the battlefields of faith. Men and women that are sold out to the Lord. Men and women that have died out to themselves died out to their own will and their own ideas, people that have committed their ways unto God, those that have surrendered all and say, not my will, but thy will be done. We need Holy Ghost-filled saints of God that will hold the sword of the Spirit high and will follow the captain of our salvation uh, onto the battlefield and fight the good fight of faith. Can you say amen? I'm telling you like never before, there is a, in this crisis hour, there is a need for good Christian soldiers uh, that will stand up for Jesus Christ. We don't need any more little weak need, uh, knobby toed, uh, you know, so called Christians uh, that, that say I'm for God and I love the Lord on Sunday. Uh, amen. And won't stand for Him on that job on Monday. Uh, we don't need any more people that'll shout on Sunday uh, to, the, to the choir uh, and then dancing to Madonna on Monday. Come on now and say amen. Uh, I'm telling you, we need somebody uh, that'll sell out uh, and say there's no longer any me in the world uh, and any of the world in me. Uh, I'm a child of God. I'm a soldier uh, in the army of the Lord uh, and it's onward and upward. Uh, I'm willing to face and fight whatever comes my way uh, for for the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody give him a hand of praise tonight. Ah, we're going to have a little church around here tonight. We're in a crisis hour. We need people that won't play games. We need people that won't retreat. We need people that won't surrender when the thing gets hot in the journey. We need people that will build up the kingdom of God. Did you realize that we cannot lose? I said we cannot lose. We cannot be defeated if we stay in the army of the Lord. We're not going under. We're not going down. Uh, we're sure as the world not going to turn and run uh, and go the other way. Uh, amen. We cannot lose uh, if we stay with Jesus. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 16 and 18, uh, Upon this rock I will build my church, uh, and the gates of hell uh, shall not prevail against it. Uh, if you stay with the Lord, uh, you can't lose. Uh, you can't be defeated. Uh, the Bible said greater is he that is in us uh, than he that is in the world. Uh, 
We're on the winning side. We're children of the Most High God. Somebody said, well, Brother Shelton, I've been in a fight. Well, let me tell you something. It is a fight worth fighting. It is the good fight of faith. And if you fight that good fight, heaven's going to be your eternal home one day. get dressed up in the power of God and go on the battlefield and fight the good fight of faith. Our faith is under attack today. The church is under attack. The word of God is under attack. People are trying to dissect this word and pin knife this word and hop like a rabbit through this word. What used to be right is now wrong. What used to be wrong is now considered to be right. We need to know what we believe and why we believe it by the word of God. And don't let anybody full of the devil talk you out of it. Don't let anybody backslid talk you out of it. Don't let anybody compromise talk you out of it. You get on the battlefield, you fight the good fight of faith, and you stand for Jesus Christ. And if you stand for Jesus, Jesus is going to stand for you. Hallelujah to God. Oh, it just runs through me to say, you know, maybe, I, maybe I'm different. Maybe I'm, a, you know, maybe I'm an old soul. I don't know. But I know the kind of preaching I come up under. The preaching I was raised under, Ray Hughes, men like that, men of that caliber, men that when they approached the, the podium, I, they were not little sissy preachers. Come on now and say amen. Men like Wade Horton, uh, amen, men that were like bulls. They were not afraid to preach the truth. Uh, they were not afraid to say what he said uh, in that book. Uh, if somebody got mad and left, uh, well, they just got mad and left. Uh, preachers that had a backbone about them. Uh, I watch some of these modern-day Pentecostal preachers. Uh, they're nothing more, uh, amen, they're just motivational speakers. Uh, they get up and they talk so soft and so easy and so light. And I... Uh, Thank dear God. Give us some preachers with the old gravelly voices again. Give us some preachers that's been on the mountaintop alone with God. Give us some preachers, amen, that's not afraid to say, thus saith the Lord. Preachers that are not afraid to say, thou shalt and thou shalt not. Preachers that's got the hand of God laid upon their life and they love the Lord and they love the flock and they preach the word of God, and they stand on it regardless of the cost. Lift up your hands and praise him tonight. I listen to, God help me. I don't know how I got over here, but I'm here. I listened to a Pentecostal preacher this week just for a few minutes as much as I could take of it till my gag reflux started working. I, I couldn't take any more. We don't want to offend you. We want to be real kind. We want to be real soft. We want to be real easy here. We don't want, we don't want to do it. Oh, God, help me. I, I thought, dear God, where are those John the Baptist preachers that'll stand before the king and say it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife? Amen. Cost him his head but he told the truth I tell you we need those kind of preachers again we need some of those old time saints of God I told you this morning I didn't come to make you mad but I come to tell you the truth amen them old timers amen they didn't have money they couldn't go to the doctor when they got sick but they had a faith in God their faith was not shaken amen when things come against them they didn't cower in a corner but they stood up. They were good soldiers of the cross. They lived for Jesus. They loved Jesus. Their lives were surrendered to him. And God moved in a mighty way in their lives. They couldn't go to the doctor every time they got sick. They didn't have extra money in the bank. Oh, but when they needed to touch God, God was there. They had touched God and God would touch them and God would move upon their lives and they would see the mighty miracles of the hand of God. This generation today, this cotton candy generation, this, you, this so easily offended. You can't say anything to people anymore. I mean, they'll go off on you. 
they'll, they'll blow up. They, they, you know, they just can't handle anything anymore. We're raising a generation of young people. Uh, you, you can't correct them. You better believe I will. You can't correct them. They'll fall apart. They go to pieces. Uh, my daddy had a cure for that when I was a little boy. He took that thing off, put me on the merry-go-round. Anybody know what the merry-go-round is? It, let me tell you what it was. I, hey, man, if I did something, I, I didn't try. You know, I was respectful to my daddy. I didn't talk back to my daddy. My daddy was about five foot seven, I, but he was a military man. I, you know, very strict. I, you didn't talk back. Now, I might sass a little bit to mama once in a while. I, mama would get me with a fly swat, and I wasn't afraid of that so bad. But then the problem was she'd tell daddy when he got home. And then that was the end of that. Come on in here, son. We had a merry-go-round in his bedroom. It consisted of him and me and a belt. And he got me by this arm, had me in this arm, had the belt in the other arm, and around. And I remember trying to time it and jump it, trying to miss it. Hey, man, what he didn't miss. Hey, man, if you jumped, he wasn't going to get your backside. He'd get you down your legs. I'm telling you, friend, he didn't play around. And I didn't talk back when he told me what to do. Yes, sir. Amen. When he said, you do this, all right, I'll do it. Didn't do all those things. This is a cotton candy generation. Amen. You got to be so gentle with them. Got to be careful not to offend them. The children are running the home today. I said the children are running the homes and that's not the way that God ever intended for it to be. Amen. You're still the father. You're still the mother. You're still the parent. That child don't tell you what they're going to do. Amen. God put them in your life to teach them and to raise them the right way. Well, I'm preaching better than you're helping me here tonight. Anybody raised up with a mama like that or a daddy like that? Oh, great God. I can't stand. I lose my sanctification. I can't stand to see a child talk back to a parent. I, I, I mean, I go mad. I can't take it. I was not raised that way. You didn't do that. Most of you know what I'm talking about. You did not do that. You'd be at Randolph Hospital. Huh? And if you wasn't, you'd need to be going there pretty soon. Amen. We need people today that are committed to the Word of God. People that are strong in the power of God. People that are good soldiers of the cross of Jesus Christ. Here in 2 Timothy, the Apostle Paul is writing here to the young Timothy, his son in the faith. At this time, the Apostle Paul's nearing the end of his life. He's in a Roman prison now. He knows he doesn't have much time. He's going to soon die. And here he charges this young preacher. Uh, he said to endure hardness uh, and be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. The Amplified Bible says uh, a good first class soldier of Christ Jesus. Uh, in other words, if you're going to do it, do it right. Don't be second rate. Don't give him parts. If you're going to be a soldier, be first class. Be the very best that you can be for the Son of God. He reminds the young Timothy of his own life, the things he's gone through, the trials that he's faced, and his own service under the Lord, and how he himself, the Apostle Paul's not bragging here. He's not boasting upon himself, but he's showing the young Timothy that it is possible to be a good soldier. It is possible to endure hardness. It is possible to serve the Lord and be a first First class servant and a first class soldier for Jesus Christ. He said in 2 Timothy 4, 6 and 7, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Paul said it was a fight, but I fought a good fight. Every day I got up, the devil knew I was up. The devil fought me, but I, I didn't just lay down and surrender. I, I didn't just run and cower, but I fought every single day. I fought a good fight. I finished my course, and here I am now ready to die, but yet I've kept 
the faith. I didn't give up. I didn't backslide. I didn't turn away. I didn't compromise. I didn't lay down. I didn't surrender. I fought all the way to the very end. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. And I've still got my faith through it all. Somebody shout amen. He's saying I've been a good soldier for Jesus. I've been a first class soldier for Jesus. I've been faithful even unto death. I fought many battles but here I am. Still got my faith in Jesus Christ. God's been faithful to me and I have been faithful unto him. And because of his faithful service in the army of the Lord. He declared in verse 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. What a great example the Apostle Paul has set for every other child of God. He shows us that it is possible to fight the good fight of faith. It is possible to run your course and to finish your course right. It is possible to keep your faith in Jesus Christ. Somebody said, well, Brother Shelton, I'm discouraged. All these people today, some I've come up with, some I was raised up in the church with, some of them are out of church, some of them have gone crazy when it comes to doctrine and theology. Some of them are far out there now. But let me tell you something, friend. You're not running their race, and they're not running your race. You run your course. You live your life for Jesus. You keep your faith in him. You fight the good fight, and you're going to lay hold on eternal life. I want to be like the Apostle Paul. I come to the end of my journey. I don't know when it's going to be, but when it comes, I'll be ready. When it's time for me to leave this world, I want to be able to say like Paul, I fought a good fight. It was a battle, yes, sir. If I didn't make the devil mad, then I ain't doing nothing in this life. We were talking about it before service. This week of prayer and fasting and spiritual renewal, uh, it seemed like all hell has been unleashed upon this local church. Uh, we're talking about it, though. Uh, if the devil ain't fighting you, then you ain't doing anything for the kingdom of God, uh, and you're not doing anything uh, in opposition to his kingdom. Uh, if the devil's fighting you, uh, you are to thank God. Uh, if hell's on your trail, uh, you are to thank God. Uh, if the devil's reared up his head, uh, you are to thank God. Uh, if he's fighting you, uh, that means he don't have you. Uh, I said if he's fighting you, uh, that means he don't have you. Uh, you keep on fighting. Uh, it's going to be worth it all. Woo. I want to say I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. They some folks don't like me. I love them. They some preachers don't like me anymore, but I still love them. I don't agree with their ways. I don't agree with their choices. I don't agree the way they compromise God's word, but I still love them. I told Sister Shelton last night, I believe it was, I said, there's some preachers that's made an enemy out of me, and I ain't done anything but stand exactly where I've always been standing. Just ain't ever changed. Ain't going to change you can get mad at me, treat me every how you want to. Uh, I'm not going to change what I believe uh, because I believe it's God's word. Uh, not going to change how I live uh, because somebody don't like it. Uh, I'm just telling you, friend, uh, this life got me here. Uh, and if I live this life for him, uh, it's going to get me all the way over yonder. Uh, I said it got me here just fine. Uh, and if I'll keep on living for him, uh, he's going to get me there one day. I'm going to come to the end of my journey and say I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. How many feel that way tonight? I don't want to come this in, the, in this journey and have regrets. I don't want to come to the end of my life and say I wish I would have. I don't want to come to the end of my life and say I wish I wouldn't have done that or wouldn't have gone that direction or wouldn't have chose this. 
I want to hear him say a job well done. I don't want to just start right. I, I want to finish right. Listen, there, there's, it's important how you start. you got to start right. But it's also important how you finish. you got to finish right. I, I don't want to come down here to the end of this thing and say, I wish I'd have fought harder. I wish I'd have done more for God. I wish I'd have uh, lived straighter. I wish I'd have obeyed the word of the Lord. I, I want to start right. I want to finish right. I, I want to fight right. I, I want to be faithful right. I, I want to hear the King of kings and the Lord of all lords say a job well done. Thou good and faithful servant. I want to be a good servant. I want to be a faithful servant. I want to be a good soldier. I want to be a faithful soldier. And I want to hear him say a job well done. A job well done. <laughs> Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. It is a fight, Brother Albright, but it's a fight worth fighting. It is a journey, but it's a journey worth traveling. You got to live by faith, but if you live by faith, you're going to hear him say those words, enter in here where I'm at. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. I want to encourage you here today to lay your life alongside the word of God and see where there's work needed to be done in order to be a first-class soldier, in order to become the very best that you can be for Jesus Christ. I want you to notice what it takes to be a good soldier for the Lord. First of all, a good soldier must be able to follow. That's the first thing they teach you in the military. You're going to follow our instructions and our rules. Not yours anymore. Come on, soldiers. You, some of you here in the military, you, the, listen, you, your, what you think don't matter anymore. My dad told me when he joined the military, uh, he said, now you eat when they tell you when to eat. You don't make up your mind. They tell you to be there at 5. You don't show up at 5.30. You do what they tell you. Uh, when they say it's lights out, you don't say, well, I think I'll stay up 30 more minutes and read this book. Uh, when it's lights out, it's lights out. When they tell you you're going to run 20 miles, you don't say you, to your sergeant, you know, I think maybe I'll just run 10 today, sir. That'd be all right with you. No, sir. My dad told me there was a man in his platoon there. He didn't want to follow the rules. He wanted to do his own thing. He said, but back then, I don't know how it is today, but back then in the 70s, uh, you know, late 60s, uh, early 70s, back then, uh, you know, they, they didn't let you, they didn't just pat you on the head and say, there, you're all right. He said that man didn't want to follow the rules. He said, so some of them big drill sergeants come and got him. And they took him off to a room and took him upstairs, and he was up there for a little while. And when he came back down, said he, was, he had knots on his head. He had some bruising on his face. And from then on, he said, yes, sir, whatever you tell me to do, that's what I'm going to do. They made sure he understood uh, that this is, you, you listen, all oh, your rights are gone now. Uh, everything that you were before you got here, forget about all that. Now you belong to us. Uh, well, that's how it is when we join up with the army of the Lord. We don't live for ourselves anymore. We live for Jesus Christ. We live to please him. We follow his rules. You say, Brother Shelton, where's the rule book? This is the rule book right here. Everything you need to know about living, how to follow Jesus, is found in the word of God. If you want to know what to do, look in the rule book. If you want to know what not to do, look in the rule book. And then obey it. Then follow the orders. He's the captain in charge of this. And if we'll obey him, we're going to be first class soldiers of Christ Jesus our Lord. We must fully and completely follow his orders and follow his commands. I'll be the first to admit to you there's some things along the way some times in this journey I don't always understand his orders. There's times I don't always understand uh, what he's doing. Uh, sometimes it don't make any sense. I, I'll be the first to tell you that. I don't have the answers for everything, but I know that he does. And if I'll just do what he says, uh, everything will work all right for me. I said if I'll just obey him, uh, everything's going to be all right for me. Can you say amen? This has always been God's way. 
First Corinthians 1 and 27 says, but God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Then he said in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts than your thoughts. The Bible said he commanded Joshua to march around Jericho. He said, don't fire a shot, don't say a word. Just march around those walls. And if you'll obey me, the walls are going to fall down flat. Well, that was not the military strategy uh, that Joshua would have chosen uh, to overcome that city. Uh, but he followed the orders of the captain uh, of that army. Uh, and when he did on that 13th time, uh, amen, that seventh day they shouted uh, and the walls fell down flat. Can you say amen? God commanded Moses uh, to smite the rock uh, and water would come from the rock. Well, that's not the natural way of doing things. The natural way is to find a brook somewhere, uh, find a body of water. Uh, but God said, smite the rock, uh, I'll cause water to come out of it. Uh, Moses obeyed God uh, and the waters flowed. Uh, he commanded Noah to build an ark. Uh, There's going to come rain, floods. Uh, build the ark to the saving of your house. Uh, when he obeyed God and the ark was built, uh, God spared their family. They were saved through the flood. He commanded Peter to go down to the river, catch a fish, uh, and in that fish's mouth going to be some coins. Uh, take it and pay our taxes with it. Uh, he obeyed. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know that fish don't have money in their mouth, uh, but if God said uh, the fish is going to have money in his mouth, uh, then you better go down there to the river, uh, catch that fish, uh, and find that money. He obeyed, uh, and the fish spit money out of his mouth. Uh, I'm just telling and you God's ways are not our ways. I don't always understand what he's doing, but if I'll obey him, we're going to see the miraculous take place in our lives, and we will be a good soldier. Can you say amen? No matter what his orders are, no matter how the world may view it, the world thinks we're crazy. They think we're crazy because of how we live. And there's people that literally laugh at us and mock us and say we're fanatics. Well, yes, sir, I'm a fanatic. <laughs> I'm head over heels in love with Jesus. And I want to do everything that it tells me to do. I want to be a faithful follower. They say we're crazy because we go to church and shout sometimes. And then sometimes we don't. But that same crowd, that same world to go to a ball game, get drunk out of their mind, take their clothes off, dance, jump around, act like something crazy, go home, wake up tomorrow, the next day don't even realize what happened. Hey man, the insanity of sin. The world thinks we're crazy because we go to church and because we live for Jesus. And they say, well, you believe in a God that you can't see, a God that you can't touch, a God that's not here. Let me tell you something. You can see God. You can touch God. You can feel God. God is real. God's alive. How do you know, Brother Shelton? I've got him living on the inside of me and I feel him right now. I said, I feel Feel him right now. God is a real God. We follow his orders. Doesn't matter what the world says. Doesn't matter what your family, how they label you. They're going to label you one way or another, so you might as well be labeled for Christ. They're going to talk about you one way or another, so they ought at least talk about you for your faith in Jesus. Can you say praise the Lord? We ought to follow him and obey his every command. To be a good soldier, we must be a good follower. Are you a good follower of the Lord? Amen. Are you faithful to him? Do you follow what his word says? Secondly, to be a good soldier, we must be faithful. You can't have the word faithful without faith. We are to be faithful, full of faith. God ought to be able to depend on us. God ought to be able to trust me. Amen. 
He ought to be able to depend on me that I'm going to do what he says to do, that I'm going to be true to him. What I am on Sunday at church ought to be on Monday on the job. How I am in church on Sunday, how, that's how to be in Walmart. How, that's how to be behind closed door when nobody else is there. How, if I'm going to be faithful here, I better be faithful out there. Can you say amen? Paul said in verse 3, endure hardness. Any person that follows the Lord, they soon realize there's going to be troubles in this journey. If you sell out to the Lord, there's going to be trials in this journey. Amen. But those that are good soldiers, they refuse to be detoured by anything. They refuse to quit. They refuse to, su to surrender themselves under that adversary. Amen. They didn't get in this thing to quit. I didn't get in this thing to turn around. I told the Lord in that altar if you'll save somebody like me I'll serve you the rest of my life I'll commit my life to you I can tell you I've been in some fights I've been in some battles but we're still here by the grace and by the power of God Almighty and if you'll be faithful to him he will be faithful unto us oh God I've seen people quit over some silly things Well, preacher, <laughs> I really want to come to church and serve the Lord, but there's just no way I can leave my cat at home. I really do. My heart's there. My heart's in it. But I can't leave my dog at home on Sunday when I'm going to the church and that little dog, that little baby is there by themselves with him. Bring them with you. Leave them in the parking lot. You want me to bring Clemmy and B down here? Lord, have mercy. I've had people tell me, well, I can't do it because my husband won't do it. I can't do it because my wife won't do it. I would, but I got a job. This job, I, you know it, I, I just can't do it. I've had people, I, I promise you, and I'm not being ugly here. I, I've been a pastor a long time. I've had people call me and tell me, you know, just I'm just not going to be coming back to church. Just not going to, we just can't do it. I, we're just not going to be able to serve the Lord. Well, why is that? I mean, I don't understand that. And when they told me, I literally, I literally, I couldn't help it. Just come out, I laughed. They probably thought I was being mean. But that's just what come out. That was the reaction they got from me because some of the silliness people have told me the reason they're going to quit serving God. Jesus said in Luke 9 and 62, no man having put his hand to the plow, if you start, don't look back. He didn't even say they took their hand off the plow. He just said they looked back. He said, remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife looked back. You know why she looked back? Because her heart was still there in Sodom and Gomorrah. As long as our heart is still in that world out there, you're going to look back. You can, be, you can be as churchy as you want to be. Try to be as religious as you want. But if that heart has any, that world has any bit of your heart, you're going to look back to that world. That's why you got to come all the way out of it. I said you got to come out and be separate from that old world. You got to live your life for Jesus. Be faithful to him. How did you live for the devil when you were in sin? You were faithful to the devil. I was faithful to the devil. I did what he told me to do. I never questioned him. I was faithful when I served the devil. How in the world can I give God anything less than my very best? How can I give him anything less than my all? If you give him your all, you're going to be a good soldier for Jesus Christ we understand that pain is often a part of the Christian experience Jesus said in John 16 and 33 these things I've spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I've overcome the world we understand it don't take that young Christian long to realize I'm in a battle I tell young converts, listen to me. When you get saved, you're stepping on the, the, the battlefield of faith now. The devil never fought you before, so you don't know what that is, but you're going to find out now what it is to fight. He didn't fight you when you are in sin because he had you in sin. But the moment you say, I do to Jesus, and I and no to the devil and no to the world and no to the flesh, you're going to be in a battle the rest of your life on this earth. Our enemies are the, the devil, the flesh, and the world. 
Amen. So you're going to fight those things. You're going to battle those things. I tell that young convert, be prepared. Don't just do it halfway. Give God everything and do it right now. Don't, don't, don't give him pieces along the way. Surrender your all to him. Because if you don't build on that right foundation from the beginning, you're not going to last in this thing. The battle's going to be on. I told a young man one time that. And he said, all right, Pastor, I'm going to do that. And, you know, about, about uh, just a few months later, he came to me and said, you know, you told me I was going to be in for a fight. He said, but I, I really, it's been wonderful. I hadn't had to fight anything. And I declare to you within about a week or two weeks, his whole world turned upside down. All the hell got unleashed upon that boy. And he quit. He gave up. And I went and talked to him. I said, listen, son, why are you going to quit? I just can't live it anymore. I said, you remember when I told you from the very beginning, give it God everything. Don't just get saved, get sanctified. Don't just get sanctified, get baptized with the Holy Ghost. Don't just get baptized with the Holy Ghost, but be refilled every single day of your life on this earth. Be refilled again and again and again with the Spirit uh, because you're going to be in for a fight. You're going to be in for a battle. Amen. I said, you, I told you that. Uh, you said nothing happened. Nothing was going on. Uh, didn't take long to you find out this adversary is real. Uh, we have a real enemy of our soul uh, that wants to get us to quit, to compromise, to, to let up. Uh, his ultimate goal is get us to betray the Son of God. Uh, his goal is to drag us to hell. But let me tell you something. Uh, there's a right kind of stubborn. Uh, there's a wrong kind of stubborn, but there's a right kind of stubborn. Uh, and we ought to get stubborn in our stubborn for God uh, that I say I refuse uh, I got my hand on the plow uh, I'm not going to look back uh, I'm not going to turn loose uh, it'll not be of my might or my power uh, but it will be by the spirit of the Lord uh, and through his spirit uh, I'll overcome it all hallelujah to God regardless of what we face in closing Regardless of what we face on this battlefield, there are folks who are determined they are going to be faithful unto God even unto death. You cannot be a coward in the service of the Lord. You can't have no yellow streak in you. You gotta have, my grandpa said, if you're going to serve God, said you've got to have a backbone like a, like a cross tie. You've got to be determined. I'm going to serve God no matter what. No matter what happens. I'm going to live my life for Jesus. I'm going to be faithful unto him. The th three Hebrew boys faced a fiery furnace, and they were faithful. Daniel faced a lion's den, and he was faithful. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood before that fiery furnace, and they told that king, they said, let it be known to you, king, uh, our God is able to deliver us out of your hand and out of this fire. But even if we go in this fire and we die, even if God doesn't deliver us out of this flame, uh, we're still not going to bow. Uh, we're not going to bow down to your image. We're not going to dance to your music. Uh, we're going to stand for what's right. Uh, that's the kind of backbone the church has got to have today. Uh, Amen. Walk up to that fiery furnace uh, and dare the devil to push you in, uh, knowing that God is going to be faithful to me. Uh, I'll be faithful to him. Uh, Paul fought with beasts at Ephesus. Uh, this was fierce and ungodly men, uh, but he remained faithful through it all. Uh, somebody said, well, Brother Shelton, uh, it's hard. Well, uh, he said, endure hardness, uh, hardships. Uh, it is hard at times. Uh, it is difficult at times, uh, but you got to keep your nose to the grindstone you gotta keep your affection set on things above you gotta have a determined heart and a made up mind come hell or high water I'm gonna serve the Lord I'm gonna follow Jesus and heaven will be my home when I leave here put your hands and praise him and thank him tonight I have decided to follow Jesus <laughs> No turning back. No turning back. You can have bad nerves and still be strong in God. You can battle depression and still be faithful to God. You can go through places you don't know if you're going to come out, but hold on to God and be faithful, and God will always bring you out. 
God's a faithful God. To be a good soldier, a first-class soldier, you got to follow him and you got to be faithful to him. And if you follow him and you'll be faithful to him, I tell you, friend, we will endure whatever comes our way. My daughter, sister, come on, get ready to play. i got to close. My daughter, you know, they don't even make people like they used to. Them old-timers cut their finger off. They pick it up out of the dirt, spit on it, put it back on, put duct tape on it, and keep working, and work till dark. Today we cut our finger off, and we call the boss and say, look, i got to go on disability. I'm preaching pretty good, aren't I? Sister Arbrecht, you play real softly, and I'll stop in a minute. We can't take nothing today. We can't deal with anything today. I mean, I, you know, them old timers were tough. They had to be. I ain't calling you an old timer, Brother Larry, but you know what I'm talking about. It's a different generation. They didn't have air conditioning out of them. They didn't have the luxuries we had today. But they could go through things. They could face things. We find out it's going to be 14 degrees tonight, and they people won't go to church because of that. Going to be too cold to go to church. Well, we got heat in here. I'm not being ugly. People just melt. They can't take things today. <clears throat> Them old timers had the Lord. Them old timers got full of the Holy Ghost. And they just said, bring it on, devil. Bring it on. Whatever you bring my way, you just, you're just wasting your time because you're not going to stop me. I'm going to live for God. That's the kind of determination we have to have today. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to serve the Lord. If my family don't go, they will. I believe that. But if my wife says, I'm not going to serve the Lord anymore. These preachers who, <clears throat> who quit preaching. Because their family don't want to be in, be in the ministry anymore. Anybody remember Brother Alford? Brother Alford had one leg shorter than the other. He's a smart man. He's an anointed man. Even them old timers. His wife come to him one day and she said, Brother Alford, she said, well, I can't remember his first name now, but whatever his name she called him, she said, I can't do this. I can't be married to a preacher. It's too hard. I'm not going to do it. He told this at a camp meeting in Charlotte years when I was a little boy. He said, I'll never hear the pitter-patter of little babies that feed at my house. I'll never hear the pitter-patter of grandchildren at my house. He said, because my wife walked away from me and left me because she said she couldn't take the ministry. He never remarried, but he carried the gospel till he died. He carried the Word of God. This calls without repentance. If my wife decides she don't want to serve God anymore, that can't affect how my life is for God. I've still got to serve the Lord. If my children decide that they, they don't want to go to serve God anymore, and live for God, you better not. i still got to serve God. If all of you in this congregation says, you know what, Pastor, I'm done, I quit, and you all leave the church, I'll be here the next service with the doors open preaching. Somebody will come in, and somebody will be in these altars seeking God. I know you're not going to do that. I'm just trying to make a point that we have to be that kind of, that kind of determination that I'm in this thing. I signed up for life. I signed up for life. And I'm going to stay in this army till I die. I promised the Lord that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Everybody stand, please. Some of you have been through sickness, but you've been faithful. You've been through things that are challenging, things that are painful, things that are hard, things that are hurtful. But you're still on the battlefield for the Lord. Some of you have been through things that others have quit for a whole lot less, but here you are, still on the battlefield for the Lord.
serving him, living for him, a first-class soldier of Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul said in closing in 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from all evil. The good soldier will follow him and the good soldier will be faithful to him till they breathe their final breath on this earth and step over into glory land. Sister Shelton, I've been through some hard battles in the ministry. I declare I never had an enemy till I started pastoring. I don't ever remember having enemies till I started pastoring. I've been threatened to be whooped. I've been threatened to be killed. I had a man tell me in the parking lot one, one night, he said, I'll kill you right here. <laughs> I said, sir, you can't touch me. I'm a child of God. I'm a preacher of the gospel. And God won't let you do anything to me right here. And he started crying. We brought him in church and we prayed for him that night. I've been lied on. I've been accused of things. I've had my name smeared in mud. My family's been attacked. I'm not trying to get sympathy out of you. I'm just telling you what I've been through. And I've watched people quit over things that were so silly. I think, how in the world can you quit? And what I'll tell you is this, Brother Oliver. God's been there every mile of the way. Every mile of this journey, there's never been one time you say, Brother Shelton, come on, I'm standing before God telling this right now. There's never been one time I wanted to quit serving God. Not one time. I've heard preachers say, I woke up on Monday. I didn't want to preach anymore. That's never been the case for me. I've never not wanted to preach. I, I, oh, I want to preach. That's what I do. I don't have hobbies. I preach. I've never wanted to quit, Brother Charlie. Never wanted to quit. I've had the enemy attack me. I've had my mind attacked by the enemy. Tell me what he's going to do to this church. How he's going to destroy this church. going to tear it apart. All those things. What he's going to do to my family. But I've never wanted to quit serving God. Ever. I've never wanted to quit serving him. I know what he reached down and got me out of. I know what he, where he's placed me now. Now I'm sitting together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, my Lord. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. This is not a down in the dumps religion. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Can you shout amen? It is peace that surpasseth all understanding. God is a mighty good God. God's been faithful to every one of us. Can you say praise the Lord tonight? I want to invite you to come. I want the pastor's counsel to help me. We're going to pray with the folks tonight. If you're not following him faithfully, if you're not living for him the way that you ought to be, tonight's the night to get yourself in there right like it's supposed to be. Tonight's the night, the time to lay aside every weight in the sin, those things that keep hindering you, those things that keep holding you back, uh, those things that keep you from being on this battlefield the right way and serving God the right way. Tonight's the night to lay the ax to the root uh, and go on and follow Jesus and serve the Lord. Would you come tonight? Would you come all over this house? Come on, don't be afraid. I'm not going to bite you. Come on, hurry. Come on, these orders. Everybody that can, come on tonight. Every child of God, if you're a sinner, come on, get saved tonight. If you're a backslider, come on and be restored tonight. If you've gotten lukewarm, come on and let God breathe upon the embers of your soul. Let him set you back on fire tonight. If that fire's burning, come on and ask him to put more wood on that fire and keep that fire burning bright. Let's seek him tonight. Let's draw near to him tonight. Let's be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Hallelujah to God. Let's seek his face tonight. Let's seek his face tonight. Let's draw near to him tonight.